Welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dolika Jyoti Sharma from the Department of English, Gohati University. We are doing today module 23 of paper 13, the title being The Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action of 1995. The Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action of 1995 is a far-sighted agenda for the empowerment and betterment of women. It is considered to be the blueprint for action for the empowerment of the women and a framework to realize gender equality and human rights for both women and girls across the globe. The UN General Assembly declared 1975 as the International Women's Year and organized the first World Conference on Women in Mexico City. My dear friends, I would like to welcome you all to this really historic event. It is simply not possible to leave out one half of mankind in this respect. In my view, democracy can therefore hardly be further developed without the... La femme, si elle veut accéder avec plus d'aisance à des fonctions importantes, doit être munie. La Declaración de México 1975 sobre la igualdad de la mujer y su contribución al desarrollo y la paz. The UN declared 1976 to 1985 that decade as the UN Decade for Women. The Third World Conference on Women in Nairobi in 1985 recommended that the UN should hold the Fourth World Conference on Women in 10 years to assess the implementation of the platform of action formulated in the Third World Conference on Women. The Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action was accordingly adopted on 15 September 1995 in the Fourth World Conference on Women. The Fourth World Conference on Women must elicit commitments to action, coupled with commitments of resources. This is the mission in Beijing. No further analysis, but a deeper level of action. I have been inspired especially by the women from the South, by the women from the developing countries, who against overwhelming odds have fought to change their lives. But we cannot lose hope. Here in Beijing, in the midst of all of you, we feel that the sun shall rise. And so we join all of you, and we continue to hope that we shall share the solidarity that we have seen here this evening. May you have peace when you go home. In the fourth world conference that took place in Beijing, the platform of action was adopted to implement the forward-looking strategies formulated during the Nairobi conference. It was a great plan of action for empowering women. Its main target was to bring equal rights and equal status between men and women for achievement of equality, development and peace. This declaration and platform of action was therefore based on the idea that equal sharing of both men and women in every sphere of society is the basis of a sustainable human development. Therefore, 
the platform of action tried to create an environment where women could enjoy their rights and apply their full potentiality in every sphere. That echoes forth from this conference, let it be that human rights are women's rights and women's rights are human rights once and for all. In 1995, 189 countries adopted the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action, a visionary roadmap for equality between men and women. Nearly 20 years later, we have made progress, but we still have a long way to go for men and women, boys and girls, to be equal. Much has been achieved, but much more needs to be done, and it can be done. Picture it. Picture a world where all girls and boys go to school. A world without gender stereotypes. A world where there's equal pay for equal work. A world without child marriages an end to violence against women and girls. This is not a woman's issue. This is an issue for humanity. I'm working for a world where women are safe from violence, where girls can grow up safe, healthy, and strong. We want Planet 50-50 before 2030, and we want substantial progress by 2020. Together, we must turn this picture into a reality. Empowering women, empowering humanity, picture it. It is also conscious about the contextual differences among women which sometimes hinder them in achieving empowerment. It believed that a just and human society is necessary to achieve economic growth in order to bring a sustainable social development and justice and sustain it throughout. Above all, it believed that a total collaboration on all levels and of all levels of organizations including government, non-government organization and their accountability towards the rights of women would be the basis for success of this action plan. The declaration situated the issue of women and armed conflict within a global context of insecurity and call for a reduction in excessive military spending. Now, from what we can see uh, from, from, from the basis, from the origins of the Beijing Declaration is the fact that there is a growing awareness of the difference of women's experiences around the globe. So that uh, all these contemporary policies of the United Nations, they, they try to uh, account for this difference of experience. Secondly, uh, in the context of growing militarization, growing armed conflict around the world, uh, these resolutions uh, such as the Beijing Declaration, they also take into account the peculiar, the, the specific experience of women during times of armed conflict. Uh, the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action acknowledged that women's empowerment and their full participation on the basis of equality in all spheres of society, including participation in decision-making processes and access to power, are fundamental for the achievement of equality, development, and peace. It also agreed that women's rights are human rights. Equal rights opportunities and access to resources equal sharing of responsibilities for the family by men and women, and a harmonious partnership between them are critical to their well-being and the consolidation of democracy. An equal participation of both women and men as agents and beneficiaries are necessary for a sustainable development. Women's own control on all aspects of their health, including fertility, is the basis of their 
empowerment. So these are certain issues that the Beijing Declaration takes into account. Furthermore, the Declaration also recognized that women leaders are needed for conflict resolution and the promotion of lasting peace at all levels. Right. Full participation of women, according to the Beijing Declaration, is essential in designing, implementing and monitoring all policies and programs, including development policies and programs as well. For the true success of the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action, the participation and contribution of all actors of civil society, particularly women's groups and networks, along with governmental and non-governmental organizations are essential too. Consequently, taking these issues in mind, in 1995, the Fourth World Conference on Women in Beijing reviewed and debated critical areas of concern and adopted this proposed platform for action. The Platform of Action, a 362-paragraph document, became the blueprint for women's advancement in countries around the world. Initially, a draft document was approved at the third session of the UN Commission on the Status of Women for presenting in Beijing. It reflected the review and appraisal of progress made by women since 1985 in terms of the forward-looking strategies for the advancement of women up to the year 2000 adopted in Nairobi at the third UN Conference on Women. The declaration stated that it aimed at removing all the obstacles to women's active participation in all spheres of public and private life through a full and equal share in economic, cultural and political decision making. The Platform for Action also imagined a world in which every woman and girl could exercise their freedom and choice and realize all their rights such as to live free from violence and to go to school, to participate in decisions and to earn equal pay for equal work. There are, uh, quite, there are quite a number of uh, key actions taken by the Beijing Declaration. It sponsored First of all, global conferences on women which laid the foundation of human rights of women who constitute nearly half of the world's population. The main activities of the conference were centered on the call for the integration of women's human rights in the work of different human rights organizations and bodies of the United Nations, issues of violence against women in public and private life as human rights issues and thirdly it called for the eradication of any conflicts which may arise between the rights of women and the harmful effects of certain traditional or customary practices, cultural prejudices and religious extremism. To provide a basis for preparatory discussions and final negotiations at the Beijing conference, the UN Commission on the Status of Women issued a draft platform for action, focusing on 12 areas which they termed critical areas for concern, which were identified as obstacles to the advancement of women. These critical areas are poverty, education, health, violence, armed conflict, economic disparity, power sharing, institutions, encouragement to ratification of international human rights treaties and promote their implementation, women's access to information and the media on equal basis, involvement of women in decision making, and the elimination of all forms of discrimination as well as negative cultural attitudes and practices against the girl child. The area of women and 
armed conflict is a central area of concern for the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action. It is indeed a most critical issue around the world as well. Now, it was as stated earlier, it was one of the 12 critical areas for concern. Now, what happens is that in the Beijing Declaration, it is for the first time that the general vulnerability of women to the adverse effects of armed conflict is formally linked to the discrimination and disadvantage they are subjected to in many areas of life. The Beijing Declaration stated in paragraph 135 that while the entire community suffers the consequences of armed conflict and terrorism, women and girls are particularly affected because of their status in society and their sex. Moreover, in paragraph 176, the platform of action recognized that nowadays civilian casualties often outnumber military casualties and that women and children are a significant number of the victims. The Beijing Declaration drew further attention to a number of aspects of armed conflict of particular significance for women, such as incidents of gross and systematic violations of human rights that occur against women in armed conflict and the disregard thereof of the IHL, that is International Humanitarian Laws and Human Rights Law. In paragraph 138, the Beijing Declaration also drew attention to the suffering of women living in poverty, particularly rural women, and their vulnerability to the effects of indiscriminate weapons of warfare, such as landmines. The impact of the aftermath of conflict as women become heads of the households, sole parents or are left to care for injured combatants and elderly relatives was emphasized in para 133. Paragraph 139 noted the role of women in preserving the social order amidst conflict, while paragraph 133 and 139 both looked at the importance of the full participation of women in conflict prevention and resolution. Thus, we can see that after, uh, thus, after looking at these uh, areas of concern and the plan of action of the Beijing Declaration, uh, we can see the various aspects through which women become the worst sufferers of armed conflict. The Declaration proposed a number of strategic objectives. This is the term that they gave these objectives, strategic objectives and action to be taken by relevant actors to achieve these objectives or aims. The platform for action also revealed a close link between equality of men and women and development. It also realized that the contribution of women in prevention and resolution of conflict is necessary for long-lasting peace. Therefore, the six strategic objectives related to women in conflict that the Beijing Declaration adopted were firstly, to increase the participation of women in conflict resolution at decision-making levels and protect women living in situations of armed and other conflicts or under foreign occupation. Secondly, to reduce excessive military expenditures and control the availability of armament. Thirdly, to promote nonviolent forms of conflict resolution and reduce the incidence of human rights abuse in conflict situations. Fourth, to promote women's contribution to fostering a culture of peace and fifthly to provide protection, assistance and training to refugee women, other displaced women in need of international protection and internally displaced women and finally to provide assistance to the women of the colonies and non-self-governing territories. 
In addition, the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action recommended that governments, international organizations and NGOs take certain steps toward reducing the threat to civilians, in this case, specifically women and children during armed conflict. These include steps to strengthen the role of women in peace and security activities, hasten the conversion of military resources and related industries to development purposes, to undertake new ways of generating financial resources through reduction of military expenditure to provide more funds for social and economic development, to consider ratifying international treaties on protection of women and children in armed conflict, to promote peaceful conflict resolution through education and training, to ensure the safety and physical integrity of refugee women, and to condemn the systematic practice of rape and other degrading treatment as a deliberate instrument of war and ethnic cleansing. Having said this, however, this declaration and the platform of action, as in all its predecessors, uh, the Resolution 1325, for example, uh, and several other provisions of the United Nations, has also encountered its fair share of challenges. One of the most important challenges that impede the achievement of the objectives of the Beijing Declaration is that of economic disparity. The United Nations, as well as the international community at large, governments and other organizations recognized as a result of the Beijing Conference that women experience humanitarian emergencies differently than men. And therefore, it suggested that greater support for displaced and refugee women who suffer from all forms of gender-specific abuses be introduced. The declaration also suggested that governments ensure proper access of women to food, nutrition, clear water, sanitation, shelter, education and health services, including reproductive health and maternity care. The need to introduce a more gender sensitive perspective in planning, design and implementation of humanitarian assistance and providing adequate resources was an achievement that the Beijing Declaration was able to impress on the UN as a whole. The humanitarian relief agencies played a great role in planning, design, implementation of appropriate programs to meet the needs of women and girls, especially in an emergency situation like conflict and post-conflict situations. This was also something that the Beijing Declaration was instrumental in achieving. In 1995, world leaders and activists came together for the Beijing Women's Conference. 189 nations adopted the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action, a visionary roadmap for equality between men and women. Nearly 20 years later, we have made great progress. More girls are going to school, more women are surviving childbirth, and more women are working and assuming positions of leadership. But we still have a long way to go to achieve equality. Today, women still earn less than men. Too few women have a say in the decisions that affect their lives. And one in three women worldwide will suffer physical or sexual violence in her lifetime. It is time for equality. It is time for greater investment in women and girls. The evidence shows that when women and girls make progress, the benefits ripple across and towards all of society. Equality in education and economic opportunity for girls and women means better health and high incomes for the whole family. It means less poverty from generation to generation, more inclusive economies and shared prosperity. Equality for women 
in leadership means more and stronger responsive democracies. It means more resilient communities. It means more rights for women and better prospects for peace and security. Empowering women is empowering humanity. I call on all governments, on all communities, to make the human rights of women and girls a priority. I call on people worldwide to build a global movement for inclusion and equality. This is not a women's issue. This is an issue for humanity. We need everyone, women and men, young people, the elderly, the public and the private sector, the civil society, religious and traditional leaders, and the media. We need you. Raise your voice and take a stand. Picture it. Picture a world where all girls and boys go to school. A world without gender stereotypes. A world where there's equal pay for equal work. A world without child marriages. An end to violence against women and girls. Together, we must turn this picture into a reality. There is no time to waste. We call on you to take action wherever you are. Empowering women, empowering humanity, picture it. The first thing that we need governments to do to fully implement their obligations under the Beijing platform is to create the binding accountability mechanisms to deliver on those promises made in the Beijing platform and elsewhere. We have a lot that we have to ask from our governments. What is your accountability? How can you have agreed 20 years ago, almost 20 years ago, to this extremely comprehensive plan of action? After 20 years, all the 12 critical areas of concerns are still very relevant. And in, in, in addition to that, there's a also emerging new issues that we need to tackle, like uh, migration, people live with HIV AIDS, um, and aging, and etc. The Beijing Platform for Action has been such an important document, which has been the foundation and the direction to move forward for gender equality and peace. But over the years, uh, the enforcement and implementation hasn't taken that kind of momentum. So I think we, uh, on the occasion of the Beijing Plus 20, we need to rekindle that uh, momentum, that excitement. So it's our responsibility with the state to review the policies of all the gender perspective on national or human rights, where we can include the concerns of women with disabilities. And at the same time, the second step we could do is to include women with disabilities at all levels. They have to be on the decision making, on the implementation, and they have to be strong. And the third aspect is very important to have them as the leaders, because women with disabilities are the best advocates of their rights. So we have to include them as the leaders. Gender equality has been the very basic principle in past 20 years discussion. However, gender diversity has been ignored during the gender equality discussion. I think gender diversity should become a tool to look through the whole process, to look through the whole statement. And then you will find new things, you will find many people when many women are actually excluded from the current discussion, like lesbian and asexual, and especially trans women. It's incredibly important that 20 um, years after Beijing um, and the Declaration and the Platform of Action, that we're not talking um, just about um, reaffirming our commitment to Beijing. What we need is urgent acceleration um, of, of the implementation Beijing Declaration. And for us, what that means in the Pacific is that we've got to have explicit and specific attention um, to the issues of um, women, climate change and environment. I mean, we know that women and environment is one of the, the critical areas um, under Beijing, but for us, we've got to say that 
you know, 20 years ago there was, of course, discussion around climate change, but nowhere um, near the scale and the urgency that we need to be addressing climate change now. So in conclusion, we can see that the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action, which was the outcome of the Fourth World Conference on Women, became the guide for many governments around the world. It paved the way for better progress in the advancement of women's rights. Although the aftermath of the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action shows some success, it was not enough, as we can see from the various challenges we have looked at. Most governments did not, and at times could not, implement the objectives properly. Although some governments initially gave some rights to women, these were later retracted. As a result, a more explicit resolution was taken by the Security Council of the United Nations in relation to the women in situations of armed conflict, another step to implement women's rights after the Beijing Declaration and the Platform for Action was the adoption of the Millennium Developmental Goals. So we can see that uh, the Beijing Declaration was instrumental in taking up the UN's concerns and efforts for women's security in, during times of armed conflict to an even higher level. And with that, we come to the conclusion of this module. Thank you.